Hello to everyone and welcome to Webcast Wednesday. Um, some of you may be familiar with our webcasts and if you are, thank you for joining today's session. Um, I hope you find them useful. If today is the first time you've attended, then uh, many thanks for registering for the webcast. Um, the idea behind these sessions is hopefully to provide you with a short session, around 30 minutes, uh, that are informative and hopefully, hopefully you'll leave with a little bit more knowledge than you did before. Um, as mentioned, we've created these sessions with content we believe is useful, but um, we do welcome any suggestions for pieces that you'd like to see. So any feedback that you have would be useful, good or bad. Um, from this, we can then tailor sessions accordingly or cover content that you'd like to see or change things that you don't like. So please do be honest, please provide um, feedback after the sessions. So my name is Emma Ride, uh, and I'm the Product Manager for Enclosures here in the UK. We also have two other PMs that sit alongside me. So we have Carl, who covers our climate control sector, and Mark, who is responsible for power distribution and our automated solutions. Both my colleagues also regularly run webcasts, so please keep an eye out on social media for any future events. Any that you've missed are actually uploaded to our website, or you can find them on the Rital UK Limited YouTube channel. I will be answering any questions that you have, but I will take these at the end. So anything you want to ask, please do send it in under the chat function. If it's something I'm not able to cover today, then I will have your details from the registration um, so I can come them back to on a one-to-one -one basis. So we're going to get started. So this slide is one that I've used many times before, and it's one that I use whenever I'm training people on enclosures. However, the message really has never been more appropriate, to be honest. The importance of what an enclosure does is, is often overlooked. Um, yes, it's there to house electrical equipment, but in actual fact, enclosures more often than not are housing systems that are worth tens of thousands of pounds, if not more. The housing equipment that can be at the heart of critical infrastructure. So if you imagine an enclosure at the end of a runway that has the control system for runway lights, for instance, or you have an enclosure that houses the signalling equipment tracks out on the railways, it's not just any old box or enclosure. There's so many options out there and choosing the wrong enclosure based on cost um, or simply the lack of knowledge on the types of enclosures that can be used can inevitably lead to failure. And if it's a housing a system like the ones we've just mentioned, obviously then the end results can be catastrophic. So why are we talking about outdoor enclosures specifically today? So I think in many instances, people either see these types of enclosures either quite a technical product, or they see them and apply the same principles to outdoor as what they would to standard enclosure applications, which don't work. When placing an enclosure outside, we have to consider factors we wouldn't ordinarily think of when building a system that runs a production line, for instance. Like with anything, we should always select the products based on how it needs to perform in its application, including its environment. And when it comes to outdoor enclosures, the environmental factors can't be overlooked. So if you aren't familiar with using enclosures outdoors, then there may be questions as to why these factors need to be considered and addressed um, that we saw in the previous slide. So a quick example of this would be um, the assumption that using a standard IP66 rated enclosure is sufficient for outdoor, as theoretically IP66 means it should be dust tight and it's protected from powerful jets of water. Now although that IP rating is a high category protection rating, it's more down to the design that's the concern, not the IP rating. So as we can see here, we've got a cross section through a standard IP66 cabinet. There's no rain canopy protection. If this enclosure was to be used in an area where water is prevalent or in an outdoor situation, then water is free to sit in the area between the body of the housing and the door seals. Now in this instance, um, it may not always be an issue, that might not be um, a problem. However, if the enclosure is outdoors in an area where the temperature could be particularly low and it's able to freeze, then the water could expand. It can then cause a gap between the door and the housing, therefore allowing water to get between the housing and the seal in this area. Another issue is the potential degradation of the seal. So if the water is full of contaminants and it's sitting on the seal area for a prolonged period of time in this position, then it could cause the seal material to break down. And again, it will ultimately lead to leakage into the enclosure. 
Another example of environmental factors would be temperature. So this is possibly one of the biggest causes for concern. Um, unlike indoor applications, we aren't able to regulate the weather. So as we all know, electrical equipment creates heat. We put this equipment within a metal housing, which then retains some of that heat, while some of it dissipates through the walls of the enclosure. Some equipment is designed to work at a particularly high temperature, while others have to maintain a low temperature in order to prolong the lifetime of the equipment. Now, UV solar gain is a major cause for concern. Whilst the cabinet will retain heat from the equipment, it will also have to deal with the increasing temperature from the sun. <clears throat> so this again is where the design of the enclosure is paramount. Double skin enclosures as opposed to single skin um, assist with the amount of solar gain that's absorbed into the main body of the enclosure. Having a double wall enclosure means that some of the heat will only penetrate the third layer and it will then dissipate between the walls and out through the roof of the enclosure. And the double skin roof camper design also assists when the sun is at its highest. So not only does it protect from the rain and sitting on the seals, but it also serves as a sun canopy. Passive and active cooling can be added to outdoor enclosures. However, if we're able to limit some of the heat absorption from the sun, then this means we have to use less active cooling. Um, another issue is, is, is people and the public, unfortunately. Whilst we like to think that having a secure enclosure, we are protecting people from accidentally injuring themselves from half electrical equipment. And whilst that's true, we have to ensure that the enclosure is safe from unauthorised access. Every increase in costs for scrap metal and copper mean that enclosures will be vandalised as people try to gain access to what's inside. Therefore, the design, again, is crucial to making it as difficult as possible to access whilst at the same time making it as easy as possible to refurbish and replace. And we'll go into this into a little bit more depth later on. Outdoor enclosures can come with um, a specific RC burglary flash rating, which relates the amount of time taken to try and access an enclosure and also the types of tools. So again, as we keep mentioning, the design's crucial and it's worth looking into what RC class um, is applied to an enclosure if it's truly an outdoor design, if we require one for a project, so it's something worth bearing in mind. And we can see here from the image the types of tests conducted and with what tools and what's required for each classification. So we can see here just some examples of outdoor enclosures in their working environment. Um, here we can see a number of enclosures within the rail sector. As we've discussed, they need to be robust enough to withstand the application um, in regards to hostile weather conditions, but also the vibration and pressure from passing trains, as well as being secure due to them being in quite um, a remote location at times. Here we have the telecoms market. Um, in the current climate and the rollout of 5G means we're only ever going to see the requirement for outdoor enclosures um, increase. Um, as we need to service this need for, for the 5G rollout. It's also worth thinking about how you can future-proof the enclosure as well to potentially cope with any changes and upgrades later on. And again, we'll look at this in a little bit more depth as we go through the presentation. Airports is another good example of the need for remote and outdoor control systems. But the underlying message between the three markets we've just seen is that outdoor environments are very, very similar. The cabinets need to be robust in regards to corrosion. They'll probably be out in the open in excess of 10 years. They need to be secure. They need to keep the internal equipment running at its optimum. And the ability to change the internal layout can be a consideration for future proofing and the ability to refurbish the cabinet in situ should any damage occur. However, as we mentioned, the underlying message is outdoor enclosures do work in a very, very similar environment. So, here at Retail, we have a number of enclosures that suit the outdoor sector. As you can see, these vary from floor standing to all mounted, many of which are standard off the shelf items, including floor standing um, with the option for active outdoor cooling units. And it's these ranges of enclosures that we've just seen in the previous photos of site applications. We do also have the ability with many of the ranges to create specific builds should the stand option, standard options not suit a project that you might have. So we discussed earlier that a double skinned enclosure provides numerous benefits um, for particular applications. However, there are applications where a single skin would be sufficient. 
In this image, we've got both single skin and double skin. However, they both offer different benefits, but do look very similar initially. Now, single skin enclosures are suitable when the equipment may not be particularly temperature sensitive, so the double skin is not a necessity. And in instances where these have been used uh, are, for instance, on private properties where access is limited to the public. So we don't necessarily need the security as we would in a public or a remote space. The rain canopy on the new basic enclosure assists with the protection of the seals from sitting water. Um, and it does obviously offer some protection from the sun. Now, like its counterparts, this enclosure is powder coated aluminium to do with the corrosive aspect of being placed outdoors. And as I mentioned, it's a single skinned monoblock enclosure. Due to the internal layout within the cabinet, and if you're familiar with retail products, the structure internally can use standard pump section and it also has the ability to use 19 inch angles. Because of the opening and the glanding details as well in the base, then cable entry is, is very, very simple. So the cabinet lends itself well to equipment that is mounted on a mounting plate or it can accommodate a hybrid of both if needed. Um, it's versatile, it can be used for numerous applications. However, as we keep saying, it's not enough to only consider what equipment we're fitting internally. We have to look at where the cabinet is going to be situated and then we have to look at what factors we need to consider. So if we move on to the CS Top Tech, this is a double skin variant and it's also pre-prepared for active or passive cooling. So firstly, we have a set number of sizes of this product that are stocked and they already come pre-prepared to fit an outdoor cooling unit on or fans and filters. However, it is possible to order this product in other sizes and configurations by way of a specials inquiry. Um, so if you have a particular project, you need access to the cabinet in different areas, we can create a bespoke build. Now, the standard sizes and options are listed on the website under the outdoor enclosure section, CS Top Tech, which we can see here. So we've talked about some of the features around the double skin and what its benefits are, um, along with the security aspect refurbishment, future proofing, and we're going to look at these in a little bit more depth to understand how we can satisfy this criteria. So the basis of this cabinet initially is a stainless steel frame. This means the cabinet is very versatile when we want to create a special build where different door configurations, for example, need to be used. Um, the inner cladding is fitted to the frame, as we can see here. Once this has been fitted, then we fit the external cladding. Now, because it has cladding, it means a number of things. The double skin, as we've already discussed, helps with the heat dissipation. It also helps when the temperature drops below the dew point, as the condensation will tend to occur between the walls of the enclosure rather than on the inner wall. However, it is recommended that if you're installed in an area where lower temperatures occur, then a hygrostat and a heater um, should be used. And obviously, this will also help the internal equipment that's fitted as well. So this is the second skin. Now, in order to fit the clad into these panels, it has to be done in a certain configuration. And this is something that also aids with the security aspect of the cabinet. The other great design about this cabinet is that should either any of the skins become damaged in any way, whether it be um, through accident or on purpose, um, then they can be replaced. So if you can imagine some outdoor cabinets that are damaged, then in most cases, the cabinet would need to be completely removed from site and rebuilt and then a new one installed. In this instance, you could potentially remove the damaged panels, swap them out, and the equipment in the cabinet can stay in place. The downtime is minimal. It's like I say, it's, it's a really nice feature having these double skin that you can just replace any of the panels that's damaged. Obviously, that reduces cost, it reduces downtime, and we only replace the part that needs to be replaced, not the whole cabinet. So it's a little bit difficult to represent here what I'm trying to get across, but the images show the fixings where the cladding attaches. Once the outer cladding is fitted, all of these fixings are actually covered and hidden by the second um, skin. 
Now, it's important that hinges and fixtures are hidden um, as these are classed as weak points. So if somebody wants to access the cabinet with tools, then this is where they would start. So by hiding these, again, we're making it more difficult for people to access and um, to gain unauthorised access into the cabinet. Now, as such, this enclosure satisfies RC2 class, which is what is most commonly offered. However, other classes can be covered by means of extra types of bracing and locking mechanisms, excuse me, locking mechanisms. And we can look at this on a project basis, but in general, RC2 class. So these are the things that you should be looking out for when you're looking to select an outdoor enclosure. Look for things such as what burglary class rating it has, especially if it's in a remote area or an area for public space. So when we talked a little bit about future proofing or taking this into consideration when selecting an enclosure, um, outdoor and street cabinets are usually standalone features. However, due to the frame design of the double skin CS top deck, enclosures, uh, it means they can be bathed together. So therefore, if a design change occurs and more equipment needs to be added, and we can put these enclosures together, as we can see in the images, we can get a suite of enclosures. Due to Rital's internal framework design as well, um, internal configurations can be changed over and over again. So as the frame uses standard punch section, mounting plates and 19 inch angles, it means that any changes would only require the parts to be removed and then reconfigured. So we know that that doesn't always, it's not always an option, but it's certainly worth considering um, that if a design change is made, can the internal layout simply be reconfigured instead? Um, obviously, by using standard products and accessories, it certainly makes it easier to do this than a complete bespoke build. Um, I always think of the internal layout a little bit like a Meccano kit, okay, so you can keep changing it and swapping it as many times as you like. And again, these are things we should consider. How much easier will it make the project by using a standard product and accessories? When enclosures are placed outdoors, it can be a lot more complicated to take an enclosure away and bring a new one to site. So if we can simply reconfigure the existing enclosure, this may be a better option. Um, as outdoor enclosures obviously need to be secure, um, not only to stop unauthorised access, they actually need to be secured to the ground. Um, and the option to do is which usually means to build some form of plinth, uh, more often than not a concrete plinth. Now, dependent upon the siting of the enclosure, this can mean a substantial amount of time and money. Um, bringing wet concrete to site, um, this could mean that permits might be needed to bring concrete to site. You may need to bring vehicles track side, for instance, if that's on the railways. Um, wet concrete plinth can also be classed as a permanent structure, again, which this can cause issues with planning. So the above plinth, which can be used with a new basic enclosure and the CS Top Tech, is a modular design that requires no wet concrete as the sections are brought to site and assembled in situ. So a hole is dug for the plinth. The plinth is assembled and fitted and then it's backfilled and again this means the need to take away salt from site is excluded again so it's a really simple easy piece of kit to use the plinth is already pre-drilled with the location holes as well then for the cabinet so again this is all about making it as easy as possible for the installation team and using standard products that are available so we've mainly discussed the floor standing styles of enclosures However, let's not forget that not all applications require enclosures as large. Um, and because of that, we have the ability to use wall-mounted cabinets as well. Again, the same principles apply in regards to things we need to take into consideration as we've already discussed. So we have options on the types of materials we wish to use. And with compact enclosures, we are able to mount these either to a wall or they can be wall-mounted. Now, the AX aluminium housing is a great addition when the need to use a standard housing is required, but it has to be placed outdoors. So as we can see here in the first image, we are using a standard AX compact enclosure. Um, you can also use the previous range, which is the, would be the AE. Um, we can use stainless steel enclosures as well. So what happens is, is the enclosure is mounted on the rear panel of the outer housing. And then we can then see in the next image, the overhousing that simply slots on top. So the overhousing and the sides are vented. So if the internal enclosure is fitted with things such as fans and filters, for instance, 
then we still have the ability to dissipate the heat because the outer housing is actually vented. So once the outer frame is fitted, the front door is attached and locked in place. Now the great idea behind this product is whereby standard enclosures may have already been placed outdoors, then this can be retrofitted to increase the protection of the enclosure. So in many instances, we do see um, compact enclosures being fitted outdoors. And again, because they're not designed to be fitted outdoors, then obviously they can start to have issues with water sitting on the seals, as we've discussed. So this is where then we could retrofit the housing around them to give that extra protection that they actually need. If we're looking at the GRP range of wall-mounted enclosures, then this is the AX plastic. So this enclosure is IP66, again, but also incorporates a range strip both top and bottom of the enclosure. And you can see here through the cross section um, the labyrinth design and the two seals there that ensure that it's protected from incoming rain, but it also prevents water sitting on the seals as we've discussed. Now we have this range strip, like I say, on the top and bottom of the enclosures, and because the enclosure is symmetrical, it can be rotated through 180 degrees. It also offers an encapsulated design. So that means basically an enclosure within an enclosure. And whilst this helps with UV solar gain, it also means that because it's GRP, it's compliant with protection class two at 1,000 volts. So again, this is ideal for being placed outside um, and for the safety of the public. Due to this, the design of this enclosure, um, because this is a new range, um, it now has a greater UV resistance rating than its predecessor. It's seven times higher than its predecessor, and it's actually gained um, the ULF1 outdoor rating. So again, this is where we talk about the key points that we should be looking for when we're putting an enclosure outside. It's not as simple as just looking for um, the material or a rain canopy. There's a number of different factors we need to consider. It also holds a fire retardancy rating of UL94V-0, which, as you can see from the image, is one of the highest ratings. Um, so as such, this product in petrochem, rail and tunnel applications, um, it offers significant benefits. Um, both the aluminium and housing and this AX plastic enclosure are standard products that are held in stock. So to summarise, if you have an outdoor application, ensure that you're looking specifically at an outdoor enclosure range or design. Look for the key points that we've discussed. The materials the enclosures are made from. Does the design protect the enclosures from the elements, not just the IP rating? Is it secure enough to keep it in a public space? How can I maintain my enclosures if there's a problem? So I can't stress enough how putting a standard enclosure outside without taking these points into consideration will only cause issues, failures, downtime, and not to mention the reputation of, of the installer to actually put all of that at risk. So tools to help you, um, whether it be for outdoor or retail products in general. So we have the website. The website um, is a great tool. I can, I've highlighted there where the outdoor enclosure section is. However, it's fairly simple to navigate. Um, the website also has a, a banner that's often updated with new products, new innovations, case studies down there. So again, please do have a play around with the website. It's got some great features. The other good section on the website is the retail web chat. Now, this isn't artificial intelligence. It's not a robot answering your questions. It is my actual colleagues here in the UK who you're connected to. So if you have a question, they will help you. And if they can't, they'll put you in touch with someone that, um, that, that can help you. So by all means, use a chat function. Um, we have the Outdoor System Solutions brochure that we can electronically send to you, um, but also please do have a look at our YouTube channel where you'll also find a wealth of information on products and services, and this is Retire UK Limited. The one thing I would say is that if you have an application or a project and you'd like some assistance, then please get in touch. We're more than happy to guide you through this. Today is just about a snapshot of some of the, some of the bits of information that's worthwhile bearing in mind um, it's covering some of the products but not all of them there's a wealth of information that we have um, but there's too much information to put into an actual webcast just for today so please do get in touch if there is something that you'd like to discuss, discuss with us on a one-to-one -one basis so i'm just going to see if there's any questions from anybody so 
So one of the questions that I've got is, when these panels are baked together, are the weatherproof baying kits in addition to standard ones? So we would use the baying kits um, on, on the standard enclosures. The actual frames inside themselves are stainless steel. The biggest issue we have here when we're baying them together, it's not the actual baying kits, it's the roof itself. So when we are looking at this, if we've got two enclosures baked together, then we'd look at putting one particular roof over so many enclosures. But again, that would all depend on the size of the enclosures and the actual number of enclosures there together. Um, Paul, I've got your details. It might be that getting in touch with you direct to, to have a chat if you've actually got a particular application that you'd like to, um, to discuss. Um, Some just asked if we're able to share the list of catalog or network, appro network approved. Um, yeah, we can send, the, send, send that through to you. I've got your details. Um, we do have a catalog that looks at the um, telecommunications cabinets, which are the inside cabinets. And we also have a list of PADS approved cabinets that are for trackside. So yeah, we can get you those details sent through. That's not a problem at all. If anybody does have any further questions, my details are on here. So please do um, just drop me a message. I should show the slide of my details on. Um, this webcast will be uploaded by website to the YouTube channel in the coming days. So if you need to rewatch anything, um, you've got any questions, please have a look at it. If not, those are my details. By all means, get in touch. Um, like I said, today's just a short and sweet introduction. So if there's anything anybody wants to know in a little bit more detail, um, you've got my details, I'll get in touch with the office and we'll try and cover any questions that you may have. But many thanks for attending this afternoon. Um, like I said, do look out for any future webcasts that we're going to be running, um, which usually run on a Wednesday. And have a great afternoon, everyone. Thank you.